Sass Junk. When I was planning on diving into all the games made by Koei on the Super Nintendo, I threw the Brandish games on the list as well to give myself a bit of a break, although uh, I completely forgot that Brandish was developed by Falcom before it was handed to Koei to port to the SNES. But whatever, I've been meaning to do a video on Brandish 2 for a while now, and I've already done a video on the first Brandish game, and what a strange, disorienting playthrough that is. It's not bad, but it's definitely an acquired taste. It looks and sounds like a game like Illusion of Gaia or Soul blazer, but instead it's actually a dungeon crawler with an overhead viewpoint. When you press left or right on the d-pad, instead of moving your character around, you rotate the room itself. It took like 10 minutes for my brain to comprehend this when I first played it. Brandish just never caught on, it didn't sell very well, it got middling scores from gaming magazines, and everyone just pretty much moved on. Koei was not deterred, however, since they released a follow-up, Brandish 2 The Planet Buster, in August 1995, and this game stayed in Japan and was never localized, so you'll need an English patch to play it. Thankfully, there's a really good one on romhacking.net made by Synchronicity that you can use, and it's linked in the video description. Not surprisingly, Brandish 2 is more Brandish, but to the game's credit, it's a more polished effort. The controls are slightly less awkward, it's a little easier to move around, and there's an actual map on screen. Plus, there's a lot of great-looking story segments throughout. Like the first game, Brandish 2 gives the appearance of a hack-and-slash game, but if you try and approach this one guns blazing and go head-on into enemies, even the bugs at the very beginning, you're going to have a bad time. Instead, battles are turn-based, just not through menus. You press the A button, both to attack and defend, and you just gotta match each enemy's rhythm, and most importantly, you have to be in a spot with enough room to back off and heal up. The B button is your jump, which is really handy because it speeds things up a bit. The X button uses an item. Y is the command button to open doors and examine stuff. And you can also hold one of the shoulder buttons to strafe left or right. One interesting mechanic is resting. There's no ins to stay at here. Instead, you can hold L and R down and your character will slowly restore both HP and MP. So most of the action here is just stand near a doorway, attack and defend when you can, and when your health meter goes down, you back up and rest up for a bit. The thing is, resting leaves you totally vulnerable with zero defenses. One or two hits could kill you. So yeah, this game makes you use your head a bit more, so you gotta learn how to pick your spots both while in combat and while resting. Otherwise, the gameplay and structure here are about what you'd expect. There's a typical experience system to level your character, there's weapons, armor, and items to manage, you look for keys, you open doors, you flip switches, you uncover hidden traps. It's just, you know, kinda too bad that it's all stuck in such a strange layout. You get used to moving around after a while, but I have to stress, after a while. It does take a minute, if it even clicks with you at all. It's always tempting to try and move around like this is a typical action RPG, like Secret of Mana, but since this is a dungeon crawler, you have to move tile by tile, so during boss fights like this that require some quickness, it can be kind of frustrating. This is one of those games where you have to make peace with the fact that it will not play how you want it to. Instead, you gotta strictly adhere to how the game wants you to play, and if this style of movement doesn't work for you, then you will not like this game. It eventually clicked with me after a while, and it helps that Brandish 2 is a lot more polished than the first game. Instead of five huge dungeons, now we've got ten or so smaller dungeons with multiple levels, giving the game a bit more variety with a few optional side quests you can complete, and that helps make things feel slightly less repetitive. And while moving around can be awkward and annoying at times, having the map on screen is a huge help, as well as the ability to save anywhere in the game at any time. One interesting tidbit about this game is that if you're struggling with movement, which is totally understandable, you can use the SNES mouse, although uh, that kind of has its own set of problems, but still, it might work for someone out there. One big strength Brandish 2 has is the story. It picks up right where the first game left off with our hero Ares, who was named Varric in the US, defeating the big villain and getting a sword so powerful it can slice entire planets in half. Alexis is back from the first game as well, and back to her original Japanese name Della, and she's still chasing after Ares, this time in an attempt to get the Planet Buster sword. Unfortunately, Ares decided to wander around and do adventure stuff until he passed out in the middle of the desert, where he was discovered by bad guys and thrown in prison, so you start the game trying trying to escape. Brandish 2 has lots of fantastic looking portraits of NPCs throughout the game, and the presentation from start to finish really goes a long way in giving this game its charm. The music does its part also. It is top notch, start to finish one of the most underappreciated soundtracks of the era.
So yeah, both Brandish and Brandish 2 are strange games that aren't exactly pick up and play or player friendly. They take a minute to figure out the most basic things, but in the case of Brandish 2, once you do figure things out, it's a pretty good playthrough. It's not a hidden classic or anything like that, but I liken it to a game like Brain Lord, where it's not the most player friendly title and it's not without its flaws, but it's still good enough to dive into, and most importantly, it's a good deal better than the first Brandish on Super Nintendo. If you really dig Brandish 2, then you can check out Brandish 2 Expert, which Koei released a few months after Brandish 2, and it's just more of the same, but a lot harder. I would also recommend checking out the original PC version, because you've got everything already on screen, including a larger map, and the dungeons are a little bigger and a little trickier to navigate, but it is the best possible version of this game. Otherwise, since the Super Famicom version never got released or remade on any other platform, this is yet another game you'll have to play any way you can. That is all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.